This is our 53rd annual meeting. This is also our meeting where we're going to announce Places in Peril. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the program, you'll learn more about it from Hillary Bassett, our executive director, later on. Um, this is also the first time we've held our annual meeting in South Portland. As you know, greater Portland landmarks doesn't mean the great landmarks of the city of Portland. It means greater Portland and all of the landmarks, great and small, and that contrib contribute to our his the historic fabric of our great community. Um, I also want to thank, there are a few city officials here. We want to thank you for coming and for supporting this project. We have some special people to recognize before we get into a very brief annual business meeting. After that, then we'll announce our places in peril, a list which will be of great interest, I think, to all of you. I want to invite Hillary Bassett, the executive director, to join us and to recognize those people. Thank you. <laughs> We get to do all kinds of fun things in the nonprofit sector. <laughs> so thank you, Jane. And uh, can everybody hear me? Uh, thank you very much. So my name is Hillary Bassett. I'm the executive director of Greater Portland Landmarks. And I'm so happy to see all of you here today. And before we start, I'd like to thank our hosts, Riverview Martial Arts and Drew Altrapaldi, who's been incredible in letting us in. The, the Rusty Lantern Market is our caterer, and uh, they've been fabulous. They're downstairs. And I also want to thank Ed Gardner of Ocean Gate Realty, who is the sponsor for tonight's event. Thank you, Ed. Thank you. We are here to celebrate the adaptive reuse and preservation of the former Maine National Guard Armory built in 1941, which was one of our, uh, on one of our first lists of places in peril back in 2012. Uh, this building represents a major success story for local preservation. The armory was seriously in jeopardy of, uh, as a vacant structure after many years of deferred maintenance and vacancy. Uh, when we listed it in places in peril, the city of South Portland was interested in what it might explore for preservation options as it considered the sale of the building. As part of the sale, the city of South Portland placed a preservation easement on the facade of the building to protect the architectural details when the, when the building was purchased by Priority Real Estate of Topsom. As you can see, Priority Real Estate has done a wonderful job in preserving the, the armory, including its decorative, military-inspired details. And if you didn't see the wonderful write-up that was handed out at the beginning of the meeting about the story of armories uh, and this armory, um, I hope you'll have a chance to take a look at it. One of the fun discoveries is that the building was built as part of the w Works Progress Administration, uh, which was a work, uh, work created in the New Deal era. So it's a really great story behind it. Um, here in this studio, you can see some fun details about the building which you never would have seen before. And um, a little bit later, uh, Drew is going to tell you a little bit about uh, how, what inspired him to be here. But there's some neat framing details that, that are still part of the, the ceiling that are still here. They're painted in black. Um, and then you also probably notice the, the lettering in the lobby area, which is the original lettering from the front of the building. Now, so I'd like to, uh, for on behalf of Greater Portland Landmarks, present several awards tonight to the developer and the tenants of the building. But first of all, I'd like to ask uh, Jim Howard and David LaTulip to come forward and anyone else who was involved with Priority Real Estate uh, to thank you and uh, recognize you with a certificate for the excellent work you did in preserving this building. We were talking earlier, it's not always easy to do these jobs, but you've done a fabulous job, and I'd like to thank you very much for the excellent work. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay. And we have a uh, certificate for, for Jim. And then I also brought an extra one for David, because I know you were on the, on the job. <laughs> and all of you, thank you so much for this excellent project. So appreciate it. I just do want to say that we want to give David a little extra credit because he came into my office one afternoon and said, I think I found a site in South Portland to build a gas station. 
Really? Where was that? Where was the old armor? I said, great, we can tear that down. <laughs> and we can put it there. It's a great location. It's a great site. There's no other convenience stores around. I said, let's do that. He goes, no, no, no. We're going we're gonna to use it. I said, no, we're not. Yeah. So he, he came back a month later, a month later, a month later, a month later. Six months later, he convinced me that we should take this project on and do this so I get David a lot of Thank you. Hey. <laughs> City of South Portland, who worked great with us. I don't know if anyone's here for a second. Yeah, thank you very much for working with us. All of our contractors, of course, our customers, Drew, who you'll hear from tonight, who's got more enthusiasm than all of us combined. Uh, John Cook, who runs uh, Rusty's Market downstairs uh, for doing the project with us. And my partner here, Chris who helped fund the project for us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I also would like to recognize the um, Riverview Martial Arts, Drew Altrapaldi, who is here. And I think Jim says it right. Uh, Drew is super enthusiastic. And, and it's so generous of you to, to let us use the space tonight. Um, so I, I wanted to thank you and have a certificate. Would you like to say a few words? Do you need? You probably don't need the microphone. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, I'm super excited to have you all here. And um, we, you know, as I said, I'm very excited about this project. We signed on in early uh, early May, I believe. And the second we set foot uh, here, we knew it's where we wanted to be. For those of you who don't know, we've been in the military carrier since the early '90s. We had a small office building over by the Rose Garden. We've always loved this area, and every single day we travel back and forth this building, being like, oh, it's so love to be there sometime. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, you know, as it got renovated a few times, and people came in, like, oh, it's such a big building, we'd love to be there, but no way we'd ever be able to do that. So since the early 90s, we've been looking at this building, being like, oh, we'd really love to be here. <laughs> <laughs> so one night, late on the internet, it was like 12.30 at night, we are actually looking at a building in West Alma. And uh, right underneath the building we were looking at uh, was the proposal for this building. And all it was was a little, if you've seen it, it was a little uh, colorized uh, line drawing of what uh, Jim and Prey already thought it might look like. And I was like, oh, I'm so in. So the next time uh, I harassed our real estate agent to contact his real estate agent. I was like, I need to see it. And they're like, yeah, yeah, like a couple weeks. I'm like, no, no, today. And they're like, no, we can't. I'm like, no, no, we need to see it today. So uh, we walked through this place, it was dark, and very scary. Uh, we're going to get jumped that day. But the, um, from the first day, I was like, I love this building. Uh, I used to be a general contractor before I started at Riverview. And I was like, there's so much potential. And this was before anything was demoed. Um, so uh, we worked hard for the next month with Jim and the team at Priority. And, um, and it was just from day one, it was a, a match made, um, kind of pretty much made for each other. Uh, our vision and, and Jim's vision and the team at Priority. Uh, we were kind of just mastered from the beginning. We wanted to have a place that brought the community to here and a place where families would exist and would be able to utilize the nature that's all around us right here. Um, and they made our dreams possible by trying to help us do this. And now we've been in here for what, eight months? Or, yeah, so eight, nine months. And uh, every single day there's kids and moms and dads and, and grandmoms and everyone in this building. Uh, and uh, with John downstairs, all of our staff loves his coffee, and you know it's just kind of a great feel. Uh, we've had summer camp here this year for the first time. Um, usually our summer camps are in Thompson. We bus up uh, to that location, uh, and uh, we we hosted it in South Portland for the first time since we began. Um, so we had kids up back running around, learning things, um, taking field trips from the beach, and bringing their beach findings back for. The, the lobby and, and through the store. So um, it's really been a great experience. And, and for everyone involved in making this happen, we just wanted to say thank you. Um, and it's, I, I think, why we liked it so much was the historic uh, reuse of this building. And, and, and every, I was here all summer long, every single day, uh, harassing as the, the foreman that was uh, completing this project. But, even the foreman and the construction workers knew the significance of what they were doing, and it was amazing. I mean, they, they did everything right down to, I mean, the minutest detail with class and quality. Um, some of the, 
the features that you may or may not know. The gloss flat, the, the glass blocks are original. All the roof framing is original. Um, the, of course, the letters were able to say, if, if you get a chance, they were able to repurpose the tower for us to have a two-story storage room um, for uh, our stuff. So it's right through the kitchen. You're welcome to go back through there. Um, and we really try to make sure that these beams are all original. All the steel beams are in here, um, which were a great find for us, uh, as you can see, with our heavy bags. But they were all made inside, the, in, inside the, the building when they, when they demoed it. So thank you all for being a part of being here today. Uh, we welcome you to Riverview. And uh, thank the team at uh, Priority for making it happen. <laughs> Thank you. And then uh, finally, I wanted to recognize the convenience store downstairs, the Rusty Lantern. And I have to say, this summer I'd been cruising through South Portland and I'm checking out the gas station and went in the convenience store and the <laughs> And it's fantastic. It's one of the nicest convenience stores I've ever been in, and the food is great. And the catering tonight was provided by Rusty Lantern. So I'd like to recognize John Koch and his team from Rusty Lantern. Thank you. Thank you for being. It's so important to have good tenants in a project like this. This is part of the equation that makes preservation possible. And so we're very, very pleased to, to recognize you too for, for being in the building. Good, we're happy to be here too. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Great, thanks a lot. And then also part of our uh, recognition today, um, let's let one giant round of applause for this team. They are so fabulous in saving the building. <laughs> And then one further note we have is we have several trustees who have served landmarks now for three terms. So that's th three three-year terms. So that's uh, nine years and one eight and nine years. So that's, a, that's an incredible commitment of time, energy, talent, effort, thinking, all, of, all the great things you need in board members. And so two are here this evening, and I just want to make sure that they we have a chance to recognize them. One is... Uh, who's sitting in the front row here, Ruth Story, who has been a, a, one of our wonderful, wonderful trustees. She has been a real advocate for education and outreach, but not just that. I mean, she helped write our incredible student workbook. She has uh, done every single job you can do in a nonprofit, you know, fundraising, being a volunteer, showing up at committee meetings, stuffing envelopes, all the things you do <laughs> on a board in a small nonprofit. So I just wanted to recognize Ruth, if you would stand up, <laughs> so everybody can stand. Uh, yeah. And uh, <laughs> we have a certificate for Ruth. I have to say, it's been a pleasure. Um, we've had our ups and downs, but we have persevered as, as a, a, a committee. And so it's, uh, it's really been an honor to be involved in this wonderful organization. So thank you. Thank, thank you, you so Ruth. <laughs> There's a, another uh, trustee who is also uh, retiring from the board this year, Dave Robinson. I don't know if Dave is still here. Yay, Dave! <laughs> and Dave also has been amazing. Dave came on as a representative of the business community, and at the beginning he said, well, I'm not, I don't know about this landmarks, but I want to learn more. And of course, as usual, Dave just jumping in with both feet, becoming super involved, uh, helping us. We, we bought a major building. We have tenants. Uh, Dave has helped us navigate all of that. He just helped us redo our entire bylaws and whole governance structure, which was huge, res res resetting the whole setup for our board. Um, and anything, just, just like Ruth, anything you ask of Dave, he's always willing to do it and happy and helpful, um, just being part of the team of Landmark. So I just wanted to thank you as well. Um, and Dave... Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, reiterate that it's been an honor and a pleasure, and it's, uh, it's uh, great to leave an organization when 
you know that it's stronger than when you came in. Now, this is, Landmarks is such a strong organization and it has been proud, I've been very proud to be on the board. Thank, Thank you. you. There we have a, a certificate. <laughs> To send that over to you Thank today, you. and then um, one uh, another person who's been amazing but couldn't be here tonight is Nick Noyes. Many of you know Nick, who is the librarian at Maine Historical Society, and also someone who gives of his time, talent, commitment, uh, energy. He's helped us with just about everything we've asked him to do on the building, education, and most recently we've gone, done a major kind of evaluation of our book holdings in our library. And so Nick and two other library professionals went through our entire collection and now we've consolidated to a core collection. So Nick has been amazing and also as a long-standing Portland resident, helping us tie to the whole history of Portland in a very personal way. So uh, unfortunately can't be here, but let's give a round of applause for Nick. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to turn it back to Jane to run the annual meeting very quickly. I'm back. Okay, so um, now we're going to start the business portion of our annual meeting. This is our annual meeting, and just to clarify, I know we have a lot of visitors and guests and supporters who may not be members of the organization. Um, first of all, I would thank you so much for coming and encourage you to think about joining our organization, becoming a member. But during when, when, when votes are called for during this portion of the meeting, only the membership um, should vote, and we would appreciate your voting. Um, so I'm just going to tell you briefly that Landmarks finished up with an exciting year with a season at the Portland Observatory that brought another record-breaking number of visitors and a spring fundraising event that broke records in support of our educational programming. We ended our fiscal year June 30th in a, on a positive and in a strong financial position. Um, we have three quick business items before commencing the places in peril. Um, first, we need to approve the minutes from our last annual meeting, which can be found in your program. So I, if I would ask the membership if they have not already to take, in, take a quick look at those minutes or if they've not already read them. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? Is, is there a second? All in favor? Thank you very much. <laughs> Any opposed? Any abstentions? So it passes unanimously. Thank you so much. And now I'm going to turn it over to Bruce Moyer, our treasurer, who will give you a brief financial report. Some organizations, you know, they say there's going to be a brief financial report to go up. Uh, they're trying to ensure the things, but as uh, Jane already mentioned, the uh, landmarks had a very, very good year. It followed a year of rebuilding. Well, and but this past year um, it was very nice. If you look in your report, I'll just sort of highlight where you want to go to see the some of the details of page six of the annual report. We uh, present the information two ways. Uh, we have income and expense from the statement of activities, and then we also, we have the numbers, and then uh, very not the pie chart. So if you're visual, you've got the pie chart, if you like the numbers, we have the numbers, and then the balance sheet is also there. Bottom line, um, the, the bottom line is the organization, uh, we finished the year in the black, and also, uh, you'll notice a modest net income of 12,000 and change. Not, I'll sound like a financial <coughs> very briefly. That is after depreciation of 50 odd thousand. So, um, meeting cash, we did even obviously uh, much better than that. Um, it was also had very nicely from the year before. The year before, we did show a loss. And so, uh, because of, quite frankly, all the uh, incredible um, efforts of Hillary and her staff and her team, uh, it's been quite a year. You'll notice all the major areas with a pie chart. You'll see philanthropy, programs, rental income, and then investments. Essentially, everything was ahead of last year. Philanthropy was up nicely. Thank you, everyone, and also for everything you've done, and also for, thank you for everything you will continue to do. Uh, programs also nicely, uh, you've heard already and you'll hear more, 
uh, the observatory has been doing very, very well. Portland has become you know, it's very much a destination now. Lots of people are coming, but also it's also a tribute not only to the, the observatory itself, but what uh, less of the team are doing. And people come back. So um, this is a good thing. The, the building, the rents ahead were fully leased and, you know, got less investment, at least for the moment. That's still performing well, too. So, you know, uh, that's the part I guess we have the least control over. And, but all, all in all, very healthy year. And I think we have good momentum for continuing because um, Jeep Landmarks right now has incredible staff and lots of phenomenally very good, strong programming on the way. And as the old saying goes, all it takes is money. We're fortunate the observatory <laughs> <laughs> provides a nice source of earned income, which is unusual for a lot of organizations of, of, uh, like us. But it doesn't do the whole thing, but at least it is a big help. So between that and uh, continued um, philanthropic support, I think we will continue to be well positioned for doing what we're doing. Hopefully, uh, doing even more. So, if anyone has any questions, um, I'd be happy to entertain them now. If you want to chat with me after the meeting, I'd be happy to do that as well. Anybody have any questions? Okay. Thank you. Committee to present the slate of nominees for 2017-2018. Thank you. Trustee nominees to a three-year term include, and I'd ask people to stand please when you hear your name, William Bill Hall, Sally Oldham, Rhoda Rinchman, and Bruce Brulard. Nominated to a second three-year term, already standing, Jane Batta. <laughs> You're gonna, I'm going to ask for a motion. Sure. May I have a motion to approve the slate of nominees? Thank you. A second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Any opposed? Very nice. Welcome. A motion to approve the slate of advisory trustees, which is in the program. So moved. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All in favor? Second down. Okay. Mm -hmm. All in favor? I totally lost. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Any opposed? Thank you very much. At this point in the meeting, I would like to open it up to any new business. Does anyone have any new business they would like to bring before <laughs> the officers at this point in time? Um, therefore, <laughs> oh, thank you. Go ahead, Elaine. Could we hear from the representative from South Portland who's here about their role in uh, building renovation? Is there someone here from South Portland who could could speak to that? Oh, Adrian, we were on the committee together. You certainly can speak to that. Sure About the role of. Well, I do. Yeah, sure. Oh boy, I'm all I'm all wired up here. Sure. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Adrian Dowling. I'm the chairman of the South Portland Arts and Historic Preservation Committee. Uh, we have some current and former members of that committee here. Jane was with us for uh, quite some time. We also have uh, Doreen Gay. Doreen, are you back there? And uh, do we have any other committee members here? Alessa, yes. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I forgot Alessa. Yeah, and I, I also want to uh, say thank you to our two former committee chairmen, uh, Jessica Squire Ruthier and Scott Whitaker, who uh, did an incredible amount of work with this committee. Uh, 
from the very beginning when the committee first started and especially in regards to uh, our work with Priority Real Estate Group in redeveloping this property. And I, I certainly want to thank David Latulip, who came to several of our meetings. He was fantastic to work with. He listened to our concerns. We, we had a great dialogue. We collaborated. And uh, they got about 90% of what they wanted. We got about 90% of what we wanted. And I think that shows that we worked well together and we can be 100% proud of the outcome of that. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. So, um, so that's also, um, for those of you who may not know, that is part of the work of Greater Portland Landmarks to reach out to the community of South Portland, not only to know that this army, this building we were in, was a place in peril, but in fact the city was a place in peril in, in the way because we have have not done due diligence in doing historic surveys, noting what our historic properties are, and beginning the process of real preservation in this particular city. And the, the city council took note of that, um, thanks to Greater Port of Landmarks, and they formed this committee that Adrian is now sharing. So it's really, that's part of our work. The South, South Portland Arts and Historic Preservation Committee. Okay, so thank you. Um, at this point, I would like to call for a motion to adjourn this annual meeting. Mm -hmm. so, Second. 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 All in favor? Uh, Any opposed? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Okay, so, thank you so much for attending the annual meeting. It's really important. It's great to see um, old and new friends. And now, um, so the highlight of the show, Places in Peril, we certainly heard a great story about why this program exists. This was just really perfect coming together. So Hillary will take you through that. So I get to wear the fancy microphone. Can you hear me? <laughs> Okay, um, so yeah, so we are now um, going to be announcing our fourth and uh, actually bi biannual. Every other year we do a Places in Peril announcement. And so this one, the first one was in 2012, the second tw 2013, and then we've skipped, we've done an alternate year since then. And the purpose of this program is to build community awareness about the significance of these properties, to advocate for their preservation, and in some case, adaptive reuse, so that they can still play a vital role in our community. And I think, again, this is a great example of such a property. We also want to provide advice, convene people, and identify resources to preserve, protect, and rehabilitate these properties. So I'm going to start with the first of our uh, 2017 Places in Peril, hopefully, here we go. Um, and it is the Port Portland Motor Sales Building. Many of you have noticed this building over on Marginal Way as you're driving along 295. It's, an, uh, it's one of Portland's most significant mid-century modern buildings with its iconic folded roof. It was built for one of the largest Ford dealers of the time, and they were creating a signature look uh, with that building. So the, th the property, the threat is that the property is vulnerable to, be, to redevelopment in an area that is rapidly changing and, and growing. This style is typically undervalued and there are no protections in place. I'm going to show you some more details. So here's some more details of the building. Um, some opportunities exist here to seek a local landmark designation for the building to encourage future development that celebrates mid-century, to encourage national register listing, which would make tax credits available to rehabilitate the, pro the project, and also the recognition of a mid-century resource will build awareness of the importance of mid-century architecture in the greater Portland area. 
Our second listing is the Seth Hay and Peabody's Seth Thomas Clock from 1925 along Congress Street. And you may have noticed this. It's right across from Tandem Coffee for you coffee drinkers. Um, this clock was installed in 1925 to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the Hay and Peabody Funeral Home, which occupied the Mellon Bolster House uh, on, that, uh, on that location. It is the only pole-mounted street clock built by the nationally re renowned Seth Thomas Company in the city of Portland. The clock is in serious disrepair because of lack of maintenance over many years, and it requires specialized skills to fix the clock and its original mechanism. It's the only clock, or one of a very few pole-mounted clocks that contain both an electric and a uh, gravity-driven mechanism to keep it going. And there are also high costs for its restoration. The opportunity exists here because the owners are very interested in restoring the clock. Uh, there's an opportunity to raise awareness of its importance. And also, there's an opportunity to, to partner with a fiscal agent to encourage private contributions to a project that will benefit everybody in the city of Portland. And here's some details of some of the mechanisms and the condition they're in. And Another way to protect it would be through a preservation easement that requires maintenance of the clock. It is identified as a contributing feature to the building, so it, uh, they can't sell it on eBay, eBay, but you can't make them make it work again. So, so I think there's a great opportunity with this, with this, this uh, listing. A third listing affects the uh, city of South Portland, where we are. See, Adrian is uh, uh, aware of this project. <laughs> Uh, this is the Mahoney School of 1923 and 24. It's a building that is a very noticeable building as you go into the city of South Portland. It is designed by the noted Maine architectural firm of Miller and Mayo and is a showcase for the Beaux-Arts style of architecture which was preferred for civic buildings. The threat is that the city of South Portland School District has received state funding to renovate or replace the school, or consolidate its two middle schools, or find another location for a new school. Depending on the consultant's recommendations, the future of, of the building is at risk. No protections exist to prevent demolition or to ensure its rehabilitation and or to guide future additions or changes. Now, the opportunities there are several. To stay as a school, uh, which is always th the best so, because the building was built as a school, or to find it a compatible use that celebrates the building and its architecture. It is already eligible for the National Register, so it would have access to historic tax credits for rehabilitation for a compatible use. So our fourth listing is the Peaks Island Amusement District of 1880 to 1930 on Island Avenue on Peaks Island. And many of you may not be aware that Peaks Island in the late 19th century was famous and known as the Coney Island of Maine. Greenwood Gardens, which is now where the Lions Club uh, facility is on, on, on that spot, was a Peaks Island Shoreland Amusement Park. And the, these are some fun historic images, and there's a few more. So the, docu the, 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 the opportunity is that there's a, to document these historic resources on the island. And I should say that the, the threat is they haven't been formally documented. Um, and there are no preservation protections for these properties. Uh, and what we're seeing in the greater Portland area is a high demand for water frontage and also for higher density. So those demands, those development pressures are impacting the future of this building of these buildings. Now the opportunity exists to document them. Uh, to document these, to encourage islanders to get involved with the city rezoning process, and that is going to be starting up soon. So Peaks Island residents, I hope, will be part of that. There's also an opportunity to work with local historians to educate people about the role of the, of the um, amusement area and the buildings, and also to consider designating a local historic district in these areas. Where on the island is it? So if you um, get off the boat, turn right, and go down Island Avenue and keep walking. 
So, and you will notice a number of buildings that have unusual shapes for, there's one with kind of a flattened square uh, facade, and at the very end there's an area with picnic tables and kind of an entertainment area. And then just inland, there are a number of smaller houses that are all kind of in neat rows, and that's where um, the cottages that were associated with that entertainment district. So it's, it's one of those ones you've probably walked down many times and wondered about, but this was a very big deal in the late 19th century and early 20th century. So the next property is uh, the Dunn Memorial Church, which is in Portland. It's uh, at the corner of Brentwood and Stevens Avenue, 1906 to 1907. The building is architecturally significant uh, because it's designed by a well-known Bangor-based architect, Vid Victor Hodgins. And the building was determined eligible for the National Register of Historic Places. The problem is that there was improper repair done on the mortar. So because of that improper repair, it has led to decades of structural problems, which is causing the stone veneer to fail and there is an estimated $1.5 million needed to repair the church's clock tower, which has now been blocked off by a fence. So there's an opportunity here to increase awareness of the church's significance, to partner with community groups, the church with community groups, to build awareness and also to raise funding, and also to explore the possibility of a joint venture with a local developer which would result in the preservation of the masonry part of the building. Number six, uh, which is Portland's African American resources, historic African American resources on, on the peninsula from the 19th century. Now again, this is one of those little known um, parts of our history where there was a very small, a small but very active and thriving community of African-American citizens in 19th century Portland. Uh, there are three areas that we feel are under, under threat. The Newberry Street area near the Abyssinian Meeting House, and here's the Abyssinian that they're currently doing some work on, and you're seeing images of uh, buildings today with the historic images, and you can see they're pretty much very similar, retaining a lot of their features. So the area is Newberry Street near the Abyssinian. Lafayette Street, which is up Munjoy Hill to the left, and that was an area near a livery stable, so many African-American families lived there. And then also in the St. John Valley area where Union Station used to be, because again, many of the African-American families were employed at Union Station. So these are resources that are not protected, they're not documented, but they're still here, and they're, in many cases, largely retain a lot of their features. So there's, uh, there's an opportunity here to get more information, to survey, to document what, what's there, and raise awareness of these resources, to expand researches of, research of the neighborhoods, especially around the Abyssinian, where many of the parishioners lived, and also to explore small local historic districts which might protect some of these properties. And finally, the last property we're, are, we're identifying is the Bowery Beach School, which is in Cape Elizabeth, built in 1885, altered in 1985, eight, I'm sorry, 1855, so that's a really significant older building. And it's one of the last remaining historic schoolhouses that characterized the one-room schoolhouses that were in Cape Elizabeth and Greater Portland. And unlike many of the others, this building is still standing on its original site. It has most of its original features and most of its original architecture. The threat is that a recent structural assessment showed that the building's framing is in need of repair. And the current owner, which is the Cape Elizabeth Lions Club, their mission is to raise money for charitable ventures. It's not to raise money to fix their building. So they need a way to, to raise funds. The opportunity is to build awareness of the school, of the, orig the, of the old school, to consider additional uses to raise funds, such as renting the hall for, uh, to provide revenues, and also to form a friends group, much like some of the other uh, properties in Portland, where, such as Masonic Temple, where the friends group is charged with raising money to keep up the building. 
So this is our series for this year, and I'll show you a few details of the Bowery Beach School. Um, we are very excited to be listing these properties, um, a few more, this year. And we look forward to working with the property owners to help build awareness of these resources, to help uh, bring together partnerships, to start working toward preservation, and to hopefully have a number of future programs in some of our buildings that have been saved through pl places in peril. Just building awareness. We heard from Paul Drynan today, who's, who's uh, head of the Friends of Fort Gorgeous, how important it's been to have that awareness. And now they're doing studies, there's work being done out on the fort, there's, um, there are many programs and, and kayak trips that go out there. But part of that is because the community is becoming more aware of that resource. And that's our goal with this program, to get people to, you know, preservation hasn't stopped. There's a lot of lot of resources and a lot of history that's still yet to be preserved. So I would like to thank you and ask if you have any questions. Julie Larry, our uh, key uh, player in the research, is here. So if you have any specific questions you'd like to ask, uh, please feel free to do so. How do you weed out the properties? How do you weed them? How do you weed them out? So that's a good question. How, how are the projects sele pro selected for places in peril? So doing the program every other year, we, we receive about 20 to 25 nominations each time that we've done this. Not everyone is selected. We actually have a, an anonymous selection committee which we convene, which includes preservationists, architects, developers, community leaders, uh, representatives of non uh, city of Portland residents. So we try to have perspectives that are beyond our own internal perspectives to select out of those 20 properties ones that will be named again. Uh, a lot of uh, the decision has to be do with timeliness and making sure that we have a range of properties identified from small to large to, to uh, representing Greater Portland. Uh, and also showing the diversity of kinds of projects. So that, and that, that nominations process is, is opened up every other year formally, but informally we learn from our constituents and our work out in the community about these properties that are endangered. So, that's, so the ideas come from a number of sources. Uh, so that is an excellent question. But how did we do it? Does the Peaks Island project have multiple property owners? One question is, does the Peaks Island have property project have multiple property owners? And I'm just seeing... Um, there's about 30 above ground resources that all have individual owners. Mm -hmm. So yeah, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the answer was about 30 different properties, all with different owners. So, uh, you know, when you do these naming of groups, such as the entire city of South Portland for its historic resources, you've got, you know, there's a, there's, a, there's a, a range of, of numbers of folks you need to, to work with. Other questions? Okay. Well, I'd like to, at last, one last thing, I'd like to thank our staff, who is, are amazing. Kate Lewis, who's our Director of Development, who orchestrated tonight's <laughs> event. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to go to this side of the room. Alessa Wiley, who um, <laughs> she's our <laughs> Uh, manager of education programs, and she put together that wonderful information sheet about the building and armories in, in the greater Portland area, uh, and also manages the observatory. Julie Larry, who's our executive, uh, uh, she's our uh, director of advocacy. <laughs> Director of Advocacy, and she's incredible because she not only um, attends n numerous um, committee meetings and city meetings, but also does a lot of research and runs our survey, uh, architectural survey program. Chloe Martin, who's in the front row here, and we're actually live streaming this on Facebook because we got concerned. Uh, well, first of all, we learned about that on Peaks Island. I just want to say Peaks Island is one of the great sources of energy and idea, ideas, but, but we thought it was important to make it accessible to all our membership who could not be here, and this will also be a part of the program will be shown on uh, community television. And who else am I in hot water for not 
And Lorena, yes, a total hot rodder. Yes, Lorena is our uh, development assistant. She does all the, she did all the um, preparations for the details of tonight's meeting, our preservation directory, and also make sure that all our donors are acknowledged and recorded and um, we know where you are, who you are, and want to keep you happy. <laughs> so anyway, uh, this, we have an incredible team here and really want to thank everybody.